Hello everyone, this is Nasser, a Senior Solution Consultant at ServiceNow specializing in security operations. Uh, welcome to the second episode of Dashing Through the Workflow. In today's episode, I want to go over Flow Designer. Now, if you've ever been involved in a conversation with any ServiceNow consultant, or if you've been generally looking for ways to optimize your operations, you must have heard of the word Workflow. And most likely, you also heard the word Flow Designer. Now, Flow Designer is literally where all of the workflow magic happens. It is where we design different workflows to be able to do things anywhere from automating a single task to automating an entire system process. Now, whether that was security specific or not, uh, I want to take you on my slate today and I want to take you through a journey to explore the Flow Designer. Okay, step number one would be accessing the Flow Designer. Now, Flow Designer is going to be limited to specific personas, um, limited by their uh, access rights. So to be able to um, modify, create, or uh, just view the different flows uh, that exist on your service now instance, you must first make sure that you do have the appropriate access rights, uh, which could change based on um, what is the reason for you to access the flow designer? Is it just to view it? Is it to be able to view and modify these different flows? Is it be able to view, modify, and publish uh, these different workflows? So please make sure that you have the appropriate access rights for that. Um, and to generally access the flow designer, similar to accessing any uh, ServiceNow application, uh, we go into the filter navigator and just look for flow designer. And as you can see, under process automation, we get the flow designer, which usually opens in a new tab. Now within flow designer, we have flows, which basically um, are the full on um, workflows that are able to start from point E, A and end all the way at point Z. Uh, Subflows are going to be miniature flows where we can basically take some um, flows that we are intending to build, but rather than every time we want to um, start with acknowledging the alert, rather than we create that specific task every time, we can just create a subflow for that and later on utilize that specific subflow to build the flow on. We also have the different actions. Uh, so is it going to be to add a pose, activate a specific plugin, uh, add a comment, add an application to meeting, etc. All of these are going to be specified as actions. We also have the different executions. So how many um, flows have been executed, the runtime, uh, who created them, the state they are in, etc. cetera. Um, here's where we get to see the different connections that can be tied to the different workflows. So we can see the Google underscore NL um, is configured in this case, oh, in the case of my demo instance right now, the AD uh, is not um, configured. Uh, if there is a specific one that we're looking for, for example, maybe Okta, uh, we can see if there is a connection for that specific application or not. And the help button is basically going to allow us to see the documentation, see if there are any other videos that have been shared, uh, community discussion, integration hub spokes, and different courses that allow you to actually be more proficient uh, within uh, Flow Designer. Now let's go ahead and jump and look at the different flows. Now, when it comes to building specific workflows, it goes down to what is your specific preference in your organization and how you want to utilize the different functions within the flow designer. Now, we can go ahead and actually start a new flow right from the get go and just say we want to name this. Um, in the case of this, I'm just going to call it test and then write a description test the flow designer. Application, this is where we get to specify do we want to actually have it global for every uh, module within our licenses uh, or, or if we want to just have it specific to one of the applications within the platform. So is it specific to the CMDB? Is it specific to ITSM? Is it specific to security? Um, in the case of this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it, keep it global. Uh, the protection, we can keep it a read only or none. In this case, I'm just going to keep it none and do it or how are we going to be running it? Are we going to be running it as a user who initiates the session or as the system user? Um, so this is just a matter of preference again. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this as the system user and we're gonna go ahead and click on submit. And then we can see how we can just utilize the different actions that we have pre-built on our home page. So if you remember, I've already gone through that, but we can utilize these actions here. We can look for the specific action uh, from there. 
and just add it to the workflow that we are building right now. So maybe um, create a record. I'm just gonna take that and add it to the flow that I'm building right now. Um, another thing I can do is add a trigger. When do I want the specific uh, workflow to actually be um, start kicking in? Uh, is it upon receiving a specific incident? Is it upon clicking a specific button? Or is it upon uh, a specific update? Or is it basically because we have an SLA associated with the um, task that the flow is going to be running for? So all of these are things you get to determine yourself while you are building these different workflows. Another way we can go about building these different workflows is through utilizing the workflows that come out of the box. So depending on which application you have a subscription for within ServiceNow, uh, some of the licenses actually do come with uh, workflows out of the box. So we can go ahead and maybe look for a specific SecOps workflow. Uh, let's go ahead and say the SecOps SAM uh, VR uh, specific workflow. We It looks like this one uh, as soon as there is a change request created or updated, uh, we update the change request record, we wait two seconds, we look up the approvals, etc. Now, if there is a specific workflow that I'm trying to build where it's going to utilize a lot of the different uh, actions that are already existing within this specific workflow, I can go ahead and copy this entire flow, paste it on a new flow uh, application designer, and then I can just modify the tasks that I want to actually modify and just kind of rather than reinventing the wheel, utilize what I have already been given to um, just make things easier for me. Um, another thing we can do is that if we know that every time we're going to be maybe creating an incident or waiting for a specific alert to be um, ingested into service now to kick in a workflow, rather than me building that within each of the different flows, I can just create a subflow for that. And every time um, I want to build a workflow that depends on that subflow, just call that subflow in my test environment. Okay, now let's go ahead and build a test security workflow. The test security workflow is basically going to send out an email to the admin every time a user uh, attempts to log in their account so many times that it fails uh, and sends them a notification to their personal email saying that they have failed access to their accounts. So to start off, I'm going to specify the trigger that if we receive an inbound email with the subject containing the word failed, and if we want to, we can even add any other uh, specific um, conditions. Maybe we want the actual body text to contain the word password as well. And then we are going to specify an action from the ServiceNow core that's going to send out an email the email is going to be sent to the admin so let's say admin at servicenow.com and maybe we want to bcc the user that actually um, is part of that login uh, attempt so we can either um, fill out the information or use a data pill in this case i'm gonna use the data pill and we're gonna call the information from the trigger initiated the workflow uh, we're gonna specify the email record and we are going to say it is from the recipient. The subject is, we can specify a subject for the email. In this case, I had it as a user is accessing from a suspicious location. And then later on, also specify what is the body of the message. In this case, I just said a user failed to access their account. Now, um, ServiceNow in general is a low code to no code. So if there is a need for you to add a specific code uh, within any of these different um, fields, you actually have the option of looking at the code and modifying it. Um, after that, we can click on done. And if we want to, we can even add multiple actions or uh, call for another subflow. So in this case, I'm gonna call for the subflow that, has, that allows us to just do a password reset. 
Now, another thing we can do is if we have an integration with any um, other spoke, we can actually call on that spoke. So if we wanna, for example, maybe uh, send a Teams message to the security channel or Slack or whatever is the uh, spoke that we wanna utilize in this case, we can specify that. And each of these different um, spokes are gonna have different function based on what is the integration um, that is created and what are the limitation of that integration. As soon as we're done, we can just go ahead and activate that um, workflow, test it out, save it, or send it out for review. Uh, that is dependent on how you want to set up how the different flows are going to be executed within your instance. I wanna piggyback on what we talked about in the last episode, uh, building integration using the REST API Explorer. To do that, I'm going to show you how we can utilize the flow designer to build workflows from or are going to be connected to the integration uh, that we possibly can build using that REST API Explorer. Um, very similar to building a regular workflow. So filling in the information for the flow, we are gonna go ahead and submit it. Now, as soon as we get that, uh, we're gonna start with the action. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the action is going to be um, service now core creating an incident. It's worth mentioning that we can also use the REST API Explorer to actually connect to other services by having service now as the common ground between them. So for example, if I wanna maybe um, send a Teams message uh, every time we receive a trigger from the API that we built or send a Slack message or something of that sort, um, I can go ahead and build a workflow for that from the ServiceNow instance. So I can go ahead and say, here we go. Um, so we can actually utilize that or utilize any of the other integration, Jira, Dropbox, etc. Uh, in this case, again, I just wanna stick to the um, basics. So we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna just create a record. Now let's go ahead and modify the trigger and that's gonna help us fill the information for creating the record um, here. So adding the trigger, we're gonna specify that the trigger in this case is gonna be coming from the REST API. Now, depending on what we wanna do once we receive that trigger, um, are we going to be creating? Are we going to be just getting information? Are we going to be deleting? Are we going to be updating, etc.? We can get to uh, decide the HTTP, HTTP method that we wanna utilize. Uh, in this case, keeping it simple, I'm gonna uh, show you post. Now, it is worth mentioning, depending on which um, HTTP method you have, uh, some of the information that you're seeing on the screen here might change. Now, uh, if you notice, since I have the HTTP, HTTP method as post, uh, we get to see what is the request content. Now, if I change that into get, we notice that that specific field had disappeared because there is really no need for it. So um, depending on which HTTP method we have, um, the information on the screen might change. Now the path parameters here is going to be also dependent on the integration that we had built and what information are we really uh, getting from that specific API. So um, I'm gonna leave the field here empty, uh, but in the case of your uh, specific flow, you should fill that out based on where um, you're getting the information or um, where you wanna add the information. Now in the require authentication um, checkbox here, if it is checked, uh, that basically means that we are going to be waiting for an authorization um, and that authorization is going to be coming from a specific role. Um, here you get to specify which role gets to do that authentication. Um, if I add a role here, uh, I get to either specify to an admin, someone um, I specifically uh, have to approve or reject these different uh, authentication requests. So depending on who has that role and then in their profile, they would be able to approve or reject these different requests. 
Now the header field all the way down here um, is basically going to define the header to be send in the inbound request. So um, we get to actually specify that here ourselves. Uh, is that going to be a string, a number, a true or false? Um, is that a mandatory field or not? Um, this is all something you get to determine based on what are you trying to be doing. Uh, query parameters are going to be the information that we are getting. Uh, we can have multiple query para par parameters. So in the case of here, if I wanna maybe create an incident, uh, I can go ahead and say, I wanna get the description. Um, I wanna get the, uh, maybe if it is a security incident, the IP address associated with it. Or if it is a security incident, I wanna add in a query label to know which integration specifically pulled that information and created the record on my ServiceNow instance. So here's where I get to uh, do all of that. So the path parameters that we add in here are basically going to be the substitutions that we want to add to the endpoint URL when we are actually sending out the request. Now once I specify all of this information, I can go ahead back into the record that we created and then I'm going to be able to basically specify which table I'm creating that record on. So if we want to have this as a regular incident, we can just type incident. Um, if we want to have this incident associated with maybe a security incident, we also have the option to do that over here. Uh, but again, just keeping things simple, I'm going to keep this as an incident. And then the fields that we are going to be adding to the incident, like uh, the description, um, again, back to the example of an IP address, the IP address, uh, the assignment group, all of that. Uh, this information we're all going to be getting from the REST API. So um, depending on which query parameters that we add in here, uh, these are going to be the information that we later on can add it to the appropriate fields in our um, ServiceNow instance. So for example, if I have a description um, in the REST API um, that is not titled as a description, but it may be titled as more information or something of that sort that later on I can utilize as a description for the incident, uh, I can go ahead and just specify the query parameter here and later on call it back as an incident description. Um, same goes to all of the other information. What we're doing right now is basically we are telling the system how to parse the different information that we've que queried from the REST API that we have built. Now, similar to um, any other flows, really, we can have a bunch of different actions happen to the incident that we created from the REST API. So for the example here, I have already created an incident, uh, decided the parameters, all of that. Uh, I can go ahead and add a subflow and that subflow can actually be a subflow associated with another REST API connection, or I can have an action that is also associated with another REST API connection. So this just shows you how we can utilize the ServiceNow platform as the common ground where we are connected between all of our uh, other devices and services. That was just a quick overview of the Flow Designer. I uh, just wanted to highlight some of the different features within Flow Designer and how we can utilize them in our advantage. If you have any questions regarding how to run Flow Designer or any of the features within Flow Designer, please feel free to reach out to you, your ServiceNow expert, check our documentation site or check our community site. Hoping that this did provide you with some value. Uh, looking forward to seeing you on future Dashing Through the Workflow uh, episodes. Uh, happy holidays, everyone.